Okay, good morning. Great job, Luke. Thank you very much for uh, playing for us. What awesome energy here this morning. It's energy of, obviously, of sweet fellowship, but also, just, I think, the energy of, of the reminders of the day. And so, um, what an encouraging thing to hear, the, to hear the buzz here in the sanctuary as we're anticipating an opportunity to worship together this morning. And so, we're thankful for that. Um, to kick us off, I'm going to do actually a, a, a short reading, um, and um, it's one that I'm sure I've read here before, but it's one I turn to most Easter's, and um, it's, a, it's a short reflection by Andrew Peterson, who's a favorite singer-songwriter of mine, and um, th- what this does for me is it helps put in my, in my mind's eye, it helps put in my mind's eye that morning, in those first moments. And so I'm going to read this, and then we'll pray together. The blue-green earth turns on its axis, rolling Jerusalem into the light of the sun. It turns like a door swinging open, pouring light into a dark room. Jesus inhales. His flesh and blood, lungs expand, retract. The pupils of his eyes adjust to the buttery light pouring in through the crack in the door. The muscles in his shoulders flex, his fingers open and fan once, curl into a fist, and then relax. His heart pumps, steady and strong in his chest, and the stuff of miracles crackles in the air about him. His glorified body passes through the grave clothes, and Jesus grins in anticipation of the looks on his friends' faces when he materializes in the room without bothering to use the door. He sings his, swings his feet to the floor, seeing the scars in his flesh and smiling again at the beauty of it all, if he does say so himself. Freedom for the captives, hope for the weary, the bright unraveling of the curse that man brought upon himself, the valley of the shadow of death now glows with the light of the noonday sun and becomes lush and verdant and green as jade. He trails his fingers on the damp stone walls and steps into the light of the new day. He is pleased with the story he's telling. He's satisfied with the price he paid, with the cup he drank, bitter as it was. And most of all, he is satisfied that he can now love his weak and wayward children with all of himself. The holy part of his nature that could bear no iniquity from man has now been satisfied. There could be goodwill henceforth from God to man at last. The sun warms his face. He closes his eyes and feels in a flash the hearts of all men and women from the beginning of the things to the end, from Adam to Abraham to you and I in this room this morning. And with each thump of the heart in the frame of his rib cage, he loves enough to overwhelm us all. Love set loose on the world. Love like a roaring lion, like a thunderclap of deep laughter. From the moons of Jupiter to the center of our boiling sun, out past numberless stars to the walls of the universe, that laughter resounds and makes its way back to the ears of the figure standing at the mouth of the tomb. It is finished, Jesus had cried in his agony on the cross. Now he thinks thinks of the kingdom he is making, of the world he is redeeming, of the living hope he has unleashed. He smiles to himself and agrees with the Father. It has only just begun. What a beautiful introduction to the kingdom as the kingdom, Jesus brought the kingdom here on earth. Uh, Let's arise and pray together. Father, it can be a challenge for us to take ourselves there to that morning, to the power of that moment, to the reality of death being conquered, Father. Um, We often in 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 our everyday lives lose track of the of the full reality of the pain of death and the reality of suffering in the world, Father. We think, it's, we think it's normal. We think it's as designed, Father. We know from your word, from your loving uh, message to us that it's not the way it was designed, that uh, we were designed to live in, in communion with you. We were designed to live in communion with the world around us, Father. We are designed to live in joy. And uh, Father, we often day in and day out experience heartbreak and, uh, and pain. And so we're thankful for these reminders of this glorious morning, this Easter morning, that where death has been conquered, the resurrection proves the power, Father, and then you tell us in your word that we have the opportunity to live in that power. And uh, Father, we are trying to figure out what that looks like uh, day in and day out. And so we ask for your grace in that. So we're thankful, Father, we pray for this morning celebration that each of our hearts could be lifted up to you in praise, Father, and that each of the messages shared, Father, could be a glory to you, and that this fellowship of this body, the love shared among this body, the the, uh, grace and mercy extended 
uh, from brother to sister and from and, uh, amongst each other in our relationships, we just pray as a glory to you. So we're just thankful for this opportunity and pray that you, again, that you will be high and lifted up. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Okay, the song leaders, kids, you can come up. We'll do our normal morning Sunday worship um, time, song worship time. And so you can come up and um, we'll sing some hymns together. Come on up. I don't want to be alone. <laughs> Let's start with number 55 in the hymns of worship.
Okay. So um, this was really called a poem. Just a second. Okay, so this was actually um, called a poem that you saw, but it's actually more like an interview. So we're going to invite a special guest, so let's welcome her now. She's joining us here in the sanctuary, so. Okay, come and have a seat. All right. So this is Mary from Magdala. Um, we welcome you. Thank you. Yes. We are anxious to hear what life was like for you. Please share in your own words why Easter is everything. Well, I just want to thank you for having me here today. Um, maybe some of you have heard about me. Um, you know, my life was dark. It, it was very dark, dark and heavy. That, that part of my life, I almost can't stand to remember it. Um, I wasn't the kind of woman you'd want to befriend. I bet the entire town of Magdala was afraid of me. Clearly, I wasn't in my right mind. You asked me what life was like before, back then. The only way I can describe it is captivity. No, I wasn't physically locked up like in a prison or cage like an animal in the market, though many in town probably wanted me to be. But make no mistake, I was a slave, imprisoned by sin. The loneliness was suffocating. Have you ever been there, facing every morning with unrelenting hopelessness? Oh, Mary, that is a really hard and scary place to be. I can only imagine what it must have felt like for you to experience those feelings of being totally lost and forsaken. But you seem very peaceful and appear like something really big happened in your life. Yes, thank you, yes. One day I met someone, they called him Jesus of Nazareth. I wasn't looking for him. But I'm not the same since he found me. He changed me. He drove away my tormentors. I was finally free in every sense of the word. I had never known compassion like that before. From then on, I wanted nothing more than to be one of those who learned from him. So when he invited me to follow him, I barely paused before saying yes. Hmm. Well, this man, Jesus, whom you describe, he must have been someone you knew instantly could, you could trust and wanted to follow. Yes, of course. I wasn't sure how, how I could really help him. I mean, really, what do you offer someone who can feed thousands with a few measly fish and tiny loaves of bread? Did you ever hear about that? I mean, I did anything I was able to do. I helped with cooking. I provided financially from what I had. Whatever our band of followers required, there were several of us. We walked with him from Galilee all the way to Jerusalem. And as we went, he healed other broken people too. He taught about Yahweh, our God and Father, Oh, the stories I could tell you if we had the time. Surely this was our long-awaited Messiah. These must have been some of the best days of your life. I mean, to walk with this man named Jesus and help him with all the people he ministered to, I am sure your life was so full. By the time we reached Jerusalem, I was convinced more than ever that Jesus was the prophesied anointed one. And it seemed all of Jerusalem did too. What a welcome they gave him there. I wish you could have seen it. The palm branches were waving. There were shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna. It was beautiful. So you can imagine how I can hardly accept it when just a few days later, All 
Are you able to share more, you think? You seem so sad and broken, like something very terrible happened to this very good friend of yours. The way the Roman soldiers whipped him, I don't know how he survived it. And then to see my Lord on the cross, it's a memory I wish I can erase. It's like a nightmare without an end. I don't have the right words to explain it. Oh, Mary, I can't imagine you seeing this event happen right before your eyes, the way you describe him. He seemed sinless, someone that wasn't punishable unto death. He was innocent. He was clearly innocent, but he died. But his life was not taken on that cross. No, no, no one took his life from him. He gave it. He gave his life on the cross that day. And then he was dead. My source of new life was dead. How is this possible? Hadn't he come to free us? As I watched Joseph and Nicodemus, they wrapped him in cloth and they placed him in the tomb. It was like my hopes were buried with him. The one who released me was now in prison beneath pounds and pounds of burial linens. I just had to walk away. I can't imagine how you could walk away and sleep that night. Like, but I am wondering, is it because of the amount of love you learned from him that you wanted to show that same love back to him, even in his death? Yes, yes, that's correct. On Sunday morning, the Sabbath, I got up early, and I headed back towards the tomb along with a few other women, and I brought spices and ointments to honor the body of our Savior. And as I walked, I replayed in my mind those events of the last few days, the ones I just told you about. I just hadn't been able to accept that Jesus was really dead. And if he was, what did it mean for those of us that followed him? What did it mean about me? Was it all pointless? The most horrifying thought occurred to me. If Jesus is gone, will I fall back into the darkness he found me in? Was my trust in him empty? Are you able to share more? I want to believe that this story isn't over. Well, it isn't. What happened next, I still can't understand. In fact, I was almost too afraid to tell the disciples what I saw. Who would believe the news from someone like me? Still, at the tomb, that cold, seemingly hopeless prison, there was an angel. Do you believe in angels? The stone door was rolled away, and it was closed and guarded. And inside, there was deflated, vacant burial cloth. Those that he had been wrapped in, he was gone. He truly, truly was gone. My Savior wasn't there. And at first I thought, well, someone has stolen his body. But then Jesus answered that question well for me. He met me. And he met many of the others in the days that followed after that glorious resurrection morning. And because Jesus cared so much about me, he kept showing up to me. And I understood what it all meant. Jesus died and freed us from something fiercer than just the Roman government. When he rose, he proved the only thing empty about my faith was that tomb that he borrowed. Hallelujah! Jesus is risen. He is risen for you and for all of you and for me. Oh, my. Thank you so much for sharing that testimony. It truly makes me believe, and I'm so thankful. So, thank you. Amanda? 
Um, at this point, we would like the Sunday School to come back up. We're going to sing Alive Alive, and the congregation is welcome to join us in that.
The beauty of the gospel lies not only in the fact that sinful humanity would be restored to a righteous God, but that God himself, the creator of the universe, would step down and take our place. It is just who he is. It is his nature. And God's nature never changes. He is and he will always be. That's what his name Jehovah means. It means he is who he is. I am who I am. And Yahweh means he is. He's God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. He is. He is. He is. He is. Jesus. Jesus. He is Elohim, God, Judge, Creator. Yahweh, Lord Jehovah. El Elyon, the Most High God. Adonai, Lord, Master. El Shaddai, Lord, God, Almighty. El Olam, the everlasting God, the God of eternity, the God of the universe, the God of ancient days. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. He is the Shiloh, the peacemaker. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner, the Lord, my miracle. He is Kana, jealous. He is Jehovah Mkadesh, the Lord who sanctifies you, the Lord who makes you holy. He is a star. A scepter out of Israel. The accursed of God. The captain of the host of the Lord. Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. Jehovah Sebaoth. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of powers. The rock of my salvation. My salvation. He is the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds. He is the daysman. The interpreter. The anointed. My rock and my redeemer. He is crowned with a crown of pure gold. The most blessed forever. Forever. He is the forsaken. A worm and no man. He is Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. He is my restorer. The king of glory. He who sits king forever. He is a stranger and an alien. My strong, my strong rock. rock. My rock and my fortress. Fairer than the children of men. The rock that is higher than I. The rock of my strength. The rock of habitation. He is as rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. The rock of my heart. The, the shield. shield. The rock of my refuge. A king and priest after the order of Melchizedek. A brother born for adversity. A friend that loves at all times. A stone of grace. A friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is as ointment poured forth. My well-beloved. A bundle of myrrh. A cluster of henna blooms, the rose of Sharon. He is the lily of the valley. The lily of the valley, the chiefest among ten thousand. His countenance is his Lebanon. Yea, he, he is, is altogether, altogether lovely. lovely. He is my beloved and my friend. He, he is, is holy, holy, holy. He is a sanctuary, a great light. A son given, the mighty God. The father of eternity. He is a child born, the, the prince of peace an ensign of the people, a nail fastened in a sure place, a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in distress, a shadow from the heat, a refuge from the storm. He is the rock of ages, a crown of glory and beauty, a sure foundation. He is a stone, a tried stone, a covert from the tempest. He is as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land, as a hiding place from the wind. He is the king in his beauty. My leader. The everlasting God. He is my elect, in whom my soul delights. He is a light of the Gentiles, a covenant of the people, a polished shaft. Glorious. He is the Holy One of Israel. He is a man of sorrows. Despised. Despised. He is rejected. He is stricken. Smitten. He is wounded. Bruised. Bruised. He is oppressed. <coughs> he is my portion, my, my maker, maker, my, my husband. husband. He is the God of the whole earth, a witness to the people, a leader, a commander, the redeemer. He is mighty, he is my physician. Jehovah Sid Kanu, the Lord our righteousness. David, their king. My resting place. My feeder. A plant of renown. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. He is the prince of princes, the Messiah, the prince. The strength of the children of Israel. The hope, hope of, of your people. people. A ruler. He is king over all the earth. He is a refiner's fire. Fuller's soap. My refiner. 
the Son of Righteousness. Wait, I skipped it. My purifier. Purify. He is Jesus, Yeshua, salvation. Emmanuel, God with us. He is born as the King of the Jews. He is a governor. The Nazarene. The bridegroom. He is meek, lowly. He is the one of whom the Father says, My beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. The Son of the living God. Jesus. Jesus. The Christ. The Rock. The Builder. The Prophet of Nazareth. He is betrayed. betrayed. Mocked, crucified, the Holy One of God, my brother, the carpenter, and his life is a ransom. He is the Son of the Blessed, the Son of the Highest, God my Savior, a horn of salvation, the day spring from on high, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, the salvation of God. He is the glory of your people Israel, Lord of the Sabbath, my healer, the Christ of God, my servant, the chosen of God. He, he is risen. risen. A prophet mighty in deed and word. He is the word. The word that was with God. The word that was God. The light of men. The true light. The word that was made flesh. He is the only begotten Son, which is the bosom of the Father. The Lamb of God. My teacher. The gift of God. He is Messiah. The bread of God. The bread of life. He is my meat. My drink. The light of the world. The door of the sheep. The, the good shepherd that laid down his life. The scent of the Father. He is the resurrection. King of the daughter of Zion. The, ki the corn of wheat. He is the light. My Lord, Master. My example. He is the way. The truth. The life. The vine. My keeper. Scourged. Crowned with a crown of thorns. Crucified as the King of the Jews. He, he is, is exalted. exalted. Glorified. The Holy One and the Just. The Prince of Life. The Anointed. A Prince and a Savior. He is Lord Jesus. He is Lord of all. The, the Judge. Judge. Jesus of Nazareth. The Mercy Seat. Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the firstborn among many brethren. Over all, God blessed forever. Lord over all. The Deliverer. Lord both of the dead and the living. The Minister of the Circumcision. He is my wisdom. My righteousness. My sanctification. My redemption. He is the foundation. My Passover. That spiritual rock. The head of every man. The first fruits of them that slept. He is the last Adam. A quickening spirit. The image of God. His unspeakable gift. My peace. He is the offering. He is the sacrifice. The head over all things to church. He is he that filleth all in all. He is a servant who humbled himself unto death even death upon a cross. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. The image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. The creator of all things. The firstborn from the dead. The head of the body, the church. The head of all principality and power. He is my all in all. He is our Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is Lord of peace. He is our Lord of hope. God manifest in the flesh. He is the justified. The mediator. The righteous judge. The great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is obedient and his throne is forever and ever. He is the upholder of all things. The express image of his person. The brightness of his glory. He is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The shepherd of the sheep. The great shepherd that was brought again from the dead. He is the minister of the sanctuary. And of the true tabernacle. In his flesh is the veil, which, which was, was rent, rent in two. two. He is the altar, the offerer, the, the forerunner for, for us. us. Entered even Jesus. He is the priest, the high priest, the great high priest, the intercessor, the surety, the covenanter. He, he is, is the captain, captain of salvation, salvation, the author and finisher of faith, the, the king, king of, of righteousness, righteousness, the king, king of peace. He, he is crowned with, with glory and honor. honor. He, he is the tempted, tempted the merciful, the faithful, he is holy, harmless, undefiled, he is the separate, he is the perfect, he is my helper, a lamb without blemish and without spot, a living stone, he is a chief cornerstone, he is a precious stone, he is guileless, he is reviled, he is the chief shepherd that shall again appear, the day star, my savior, he is the word of life, he is the life. That, that eternal, eternal life which was, was with, with the, the Father. Father. 
He is Jesus Christ, the righteous. The Savior of the world, the true God. True God. The Advocate. He is the Advocate. He is Jesus Christ. He is the first begotten of the dead. He is the Prince of the Kings of the Earth. He is the Almighty, which is and which was and which is to come. He is the beginning and the ending. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. He is he that liveth. He is the tree of life. He is the, the hidden man. He is the, the faithful and true witness. He is the Amen. He is the beginning of the creation of God. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the lamb that was slain. He is the lamb in the midst of the throne. He is the lamb slain. He is the King of Saints, King of Nations. He is Lord of Lords. He is faithful and true. He is crowned with many crowns. He is the Word of God. He is the King of Kings. He is the Temple. He is the bright and morning star. One last set change, I guess. Well, thank you, everybody, who's had a, a part in the program so far. That was not only the cutest thing to have all the different ages and everyone up there uh, speaking about who our Lord Jesus Christ is, but how many pages did you guys have? One continuous if you're digitally, but how, how many? Ten pages? Man. I don't know about you, but the only thing I was thinking is like, our Lord Jesus Christ, can, he can't even be contained on ten pages, right? You, we could have gone on forever, right? It's, it talks about that in Scripture. How if the sky was parchment paper and the, and the ocean was ink, that it still couldn't contain who our Lord Jesus Christ is. And even just here in 10, 15 minutes, however long that took, I couldn't help but just think, these are all the things that my Lord Jesus Christ is that are true, that I can have confidence in, and yet I still doubt. We still have to make it personal. He is who he is, and it can't even be contained, and it can't even be contained in 10 minutes by, by those who just talked about him. But he is all those things. He is all those things. And yet I'm still doubting, I'm still flesh, I'm still weak. And so for the next 15 to 20 minutes, um, uh, th this will be the, the last part of our program. We'll, we'll sing another song at the end and, and pray. But um, I was really touched, uh, for those of you that were in choir, um, in one of the uh, um, practices where Drew wasn't here, Alec Graham um, was helping us. And, and he walked through in the song, Hymn of Heaven, um, some of the dynamics and, and the dynamics he brought back to the words and, and that's really hard for me I think I shared once that many times in a song I go through the music to words and I often miss the words and he brought out what the, real, what, the, what the root of the dynamics of the song we were about to sing is rooted in the words that we're saying and there was this building there was this progression and so I, I want to share that with you a little bit and so we're going to go verse by verse there's only three of them and we're going to read the verse, and I want to talk a little bit about the connotation or just the, what's, what's going on in the verse and the feelings that, that are associated with it. And then also uh, mirror with that the promises that are in Scripture that these, that these verses of this song are tied to. And so it's, it's the song, Hymn of Heaven. 
And uh, I went back and listened to Phil Wickham as who sings it. Um, and they wrote it about three or four years ago, right in the, right in the middle of the pandemic. They wrote it, kind of uh, him and a bunch of different songwriters, they wrote it together. Um, and, and he had this phrase that it's, that it's a hope for the future, right? That's what Resurrection Sunday is. It's a promise that we get to remember, that, but that we also get to look forward to. Right? We get to remember the first resurrection of Jesus Christ that gives us hope. We also get to look forward to the future resurrection of all the saints together in heaven. And so this song is about a hope for a future, or a hope for the future, but also prayer for the now. And it brings heaven to, to this moment that we're in. And so, I, I just, like I said, I just want to go through these three verses um, and hopefully we can feel this progression and, and these promises building. So verse 1 goes like this. How I long to breathe the air of heaven. If you don't mind, just close your eyes as, as I read this. How I long to breathe the air of heaven. Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets. To look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity. There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with he who died and rose again, holy, holy is the Lord. You can open, you can open your eyes. That's verse 1. So that, that first verse has this, con, this, this feeling of this contemplating the reality and the struggle and the turmoil that is life now. I don't know if you felt that in, in the words, but we're, th- there's this like longing exhaustion almost that, that's expressed in that verse. How I long to breathe the air of heaven to where I'm not at right now, where pain's gone and mercy fills the streets. To be able to be with my Savior and be with Him for eternity. And I know that this will be someday where everybody will bow and death will be no more and I'll be face to face with my Savior. This longing exhaustion is what I felt in that verse. Because we experience pain. We experience a lack of mercy in in this life, in this world, right? In, In our experiences. You all experience pain. We've had, we've had, through the last just short while, loved ones pass. We've had loved ones that are really sick. We've had relationships that maybe aren't what they could be. And that's maybe putting it mildly. We have strife with our kids. We even have tensions as we move forward with change. Life stages move on and that hits us like a ton of bricks sometimes. Financial situations come. Marriages have struggles. We live in in this world of longing exhaustion because we experience all those things. But still, but still, you can hear in that verse this hanging on to some promises. So let's let's just flip to, to two places that go with this verse. Revelations 21. It's easy to find. If you want to flip there, you can, or I'm going to be reading them fairly fast. Revelations 21, verses 1 through 4. This is where these promises, this, these, are, these are the foundations where these promises that, that this uh, songwriter is writing about, these are the promises where this rests, or the foundation where these promises rest, rather. Revelation 21, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Do you feel that also in Mary Magdalene's recounting of the story, this joy and this realization through her connection with Jesus Christ, who he was and who he was to her, and then the depth of of her just, I can't believe what is happening as he dies, and then the joy that comes 
We, get, we experience that now. We, we experience this, this up and this down. And we have to look to these promises. And God, verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Don't you long for that? How I long to breathe the air of heaven. In one way, it makes me not want to be here in the now. I love all of you, but when I read that, like it makes me want to be transported there. And as a Christian, and as Jesus Christ is our Savior, we, we can't help but long for that. We can't help but long in this, experienced, uh, in this experience of exhaustion and of depth and of turmoil and strife. We can't help but long for that. But we don't have that right now. We get to hang on to these promises. So we're going to go to verse 2. You can close your eyes again to hear how how verse 2 of this uh, song reads. It starts to lift up a little bit. So verse 2, In every prayer we prayed in desperation. The songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear. In the end, we'll see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears. Oh, there will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death will be no more, standing face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. That's verse 2. So you feel that lift a little bit? There's this like, there's this promise that steadfast prayer keeps us close to God and to seeing His redemptive work. Right? All those prayers we prayed in desperation, the songs we sing right now with, with the lack of realization of, of what is to come, but the faith that it is coming, these songs and these prayers that we pray out of desperation and through doubt and fear, we'll see that it's worth it. We're going to read Psalm 66. Just a couple verses there about how the Lord views our prayers in Psalm 66, verses 19 and 20. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. There's not the promise that it's always going to be answered perfectly as we would desire it, but there is the promise that in faithfulness to our Father, as we long for Him, as we reach out to Him, as we cry out to Him, that He hears us. And in that prayer, ultimate blessing and honor is to God. Verse 20, Blessed be God. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor His mercy from me. Let's also flip over to 1 Corinthians 13. So there's another promise in here that you can just feel that comes out of the, those first two lines. In every prayer we prayed in desperation, the songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear, we'll see that in the end it's worth it. Which, which that, that dichotomy just speaks to the fact that we don't, we don't understand it all, that we, we, we're desperate and we're longing, but we don't, we don't feel the, the, fulfillment of some of, the fulfillment of the promise yet. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now... We see through glass through a glass darkly. But then face to face, there's face to face again. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even also as even as also I am known. Let me read that one more time. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. It's through the power of the Spirit that we get to turn in that, the middle of that verse that in the end we'll see that it is worth it. When right now we're praying out of desperation, when right now we're maybe singing in, in weak faith sometimes, or we're singing with doubts or through tears, when He returns to wipe all of those away, in the end we'll see that it's worth it. And that all of this darkness, all of this shadow of... of uh, um, 
just things I don't understand and how God's moving and how God's working, even in those struggles, even in those places of pain and what we maybe see as a lack of mercy, we'll be able to see God's ultimate hand working throughout all of our life and the lives of those around us. And we'll be known. When you're face to face with someone, it's hard to hide who you are. Right? It's hard to hide your breath. It's hard to hide, you know, things that are on your face. It's hard to hide your facial expressions. It's like when you're face to face, you're connecting. And when we're face to face with our Savior Jesus Christ, nothing, nothing will be unknown. We will be fully known by God. And we are fully known by Him now, but we'll feel that, we'll understand that, we'll be able to see the the depth of that. And so I hope you feel a little bit of a shift there from verse 1 into verse 2. The verse 1 is really sunk into this desperate feeling. And verse 2 is starting to, to kind of lift our eyes almost through, through just the washing of these promises over us. And through prayer and, and singing and praise that we can, that are in, and through the power of the Spirit that our eyes can be lifted up to our Father. And always keeping in view those, those in, in the future promises. But, but verse 3 brings our eyes fully up and brings us back to today. So verse 3, if we would, let's close our eyes and I'm going to read verse 3. And on that day, we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain forever he shall reign so let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints we raise a mighty roar glory to our god who gave us life beyond the grave holy holy is the lord that's the end of verse 3 there's this settling of the promises that brings joy today. This is not just about the future. This is not just about longing for heaven, although that is the feeling we have. This brings us back to the real, uh, the real nature of how these promises play out brings us back to joy in today. Even amidst all of those things, so let it be today that we shout the hymn of heaven. With angels and the saints, we, we get to today Right? We're going to see this picture here in a minute in Revelation of all the saints singing to our God. Mary Magdalene, I believe, I, I believe that she is there in heaven singing praise to our Father. And when we do that here in unison together, we are now singing with the saints of a thousand generations. Right? This, is, this is a broken picture, although it is a beautiful picture. This is a broken picture of that future. Uh, for us, it's future. For those that are in heaven, it's now of the perfect worship of our Father that is going on. So let's read about that real fast. We're just going to be in a couple more places. Revelation 7. Let's read about that. Revelation 7, verses 9 through 12. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number. This is the thousand, thousand generations. <clears throat> a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne. This is what John is seeing. This is what is happening. This is not past tense, and this is not future tense. This is present tense. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. That is what is happening right now. On that day, we join the resurrection. That is future tense for us, but the resurrection for uh, saints of the past has already happened, and they are there with Jesus, standing face to face. We'll get to be with those past heroes of the faith 
that we read about in the Bible and those that we've maybe lost and, and uh, loved of our families and will be with one voice singing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Revelations 4, this will be one of the last ones we read. Revelation 4, just flip a few, a few pages, verse 6 through 11. And before the throne, let's see what else is around the throne. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. When we sing these songs, when we worship together, we do it with the saints before and those that are in um, this multitude of this picture of the throne room glorifying our Father. And so let it be today that we shout the hymn of heaven. We're going to read one more scripture that speaks of this lively hope that we have today. And we're going to finish in 1 Peter Chapter 1. This will be the last thing we read. 1 Peter 1. We're going to read the first eight verses that speak about this, this hope that fills us today. This isn't just a hope for the future. It, it's not just a hope that we read about that happened in the past, that we celebrate on, on sunrise morning of, of the promise that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. This, this brings us to a lively hope. 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers seated throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That word lively is zeo, and it means to enjoy real life that is active, blessed, and endless in the kingdom of God. That we have a lively hope by the resurrection of, the, of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein, in that faith, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love." In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. So I hope as we think about sunrise morning, we think about the fulfillment of the promise of Jesus Christ, the overcoming of death, and that his resurrection has, has given us hope, that it brings us back to today, and I'll read the last bit of the chorus that's the only one that's different throughout these three verses. So let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven. With angels and the saints we raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave. Holy, holy is the Lord. I think we're going to finish with a song in the hymns of worship. Jordan, I don't remember what number that is. Let's stand and sing number 39 in the hymns of worship. Crown him with many crowns. 39.
Well, thank you, Blair, I don't know where he's at, for the sermon and for everyone who um, spoke today. Um, it's just awesome praising the Lord um, for his resurrection today. Um, before I pray, I'll give a, a few closing comments. Um, this Easter, I'd say, is uh, special for me because it's the first Easter that I've been able to actually appreciate for what it actually is. Um, it's not, it's not about the family gatherings, the food, um, the Easter egg hunts. I still don't even know what the Easter bunny is supposed to be, but no, it's not about the basketball either, um, but it's about um, just this week and Jesus dying on the cross. Um, you heard from Chad. I appreciate how he put it. Jesus was condemned unjustly. He was beaten, bruised, mocked. Um, died on the cross for our sins. We don't deserve it, but um, his love um, allowed that. And then today, um, Jesus was victorious. He rose again, um, and we can celebrate in that, and it's, it's awesome. Um, I was talking to mom the other day. Um, she had a really cool story. Um, she's a second grade teacher, for those of you who don't know. But she did show and tell with the kids, and one of the kids brought in a cross, and she walked up to the front of the classroom, and she was like, this is the cross. This was on Friday, so good Friday. It's like, this is the cross that um, 
Jesus died on and shed his blood for our sins. And some of the other kids were like, oh, like sad. And then one of the kids was like, but he rose again. And then the kids were, some of the kids were like, yeah, he did rise again. I thought that was an awesome story. You don't hear that too much in school. But, um, but then after the resurrection, I just have a verse real quick. When Jesus was talking to the disciples in Mark 16, just the first part of the, the Great Commission, as the Bible puts it, he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. I think that's a good calling because it's a good time to celebrate, um, but we also need to remember that we have work to do here on earth. We need to preach the gospel, and it's not easy. Um, it can be, it's hard to do, and um, um, it can, there's a lot of anxiety with it, for sure, but um, one thing that's good to remember is just imagine Jesus' anxiety before leading up to the, the crucifixion and um, the pain and suffering he had. And we have to be um, willing to go through the same pain and suffering as he did. So let's rise in prayer. Lord, thank you for this um, beautiful weekend here. This time we can come and gather and celebrate you. Um, just thank you for your sacrifice on the cross and um, your glorious resurrection today. And just help us just praise you. Um, we heard so many of um, your names today. You are the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, Alpha and Omega, um, and so many more. And just help us remember this and preach your word, Lord, um, today, tomorrow, and the rest of our lives. And just thank you once again for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for our sins, Lord, and amen. Oh, yes. Um, one more thing. Um, I was told that there's flowers in the lunchroom, so if you want to get a flower or give someone a flower, then go grab one or two. Thank you, Kyler, for comments and prayer. appreciate that. What an awesome, beautiful morning. I praise God for the gifts of this church family. What a gifted church family, and we praise God for that, and thank you for sharing them today. Um, don't have much for announcements. Again, uh, the purpose of today is to worship and to have our hearts lifted up in praise for the gift of, of Easter. Uh, just a couple comments. We, we will have midweek service this week, 7 p.m. Uh, I think Lynn Stiglitz is planning to be here from Leo. Uh, Saturday evening will be communion, 7 p.m. Next Sunday, Sunday school will be first service, and the um, ordination service will be second service. And so um, that'll, I'll leave that for the announcements today. I do have one extra special announcement. There's a PYG engagement. And so these come along sometimes. And uh, this one's a little bit extra special for me. So my niece, Shelby, um, is being announced today to Adam Beer from Milford. And so he's Randy and Deb Beer's daughter. Shelby is Clinton Bethany Platner's daughter. And so special to be able to announce that and share that. It will also be shared, obviously, in Milford and Leo as well today. So, so anyway, we, we, as a church family, will likely, because school is not done for them, we'll likely have the opportunity to walk with them through their first year of marriage, and so that's always an opportunity for us. So, so uh, again, thank you for the beautiful day, and uh, we'll now enjoy some time of fellowship and enjoy the rest of your day with family or whatever you have.